Hey everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood GM, Giancarlo Herrera here, and I have some updates and a special gift for you. So first of all, we have missed you dearly since the end of Yes Chef, and at this point in time we have some great news as we will be coming back next week with our Halloween special both on the main feed and on the Patreon with a whole new arc of Beyond D&D, and we'll be doing this for the rest of the year before coming back with Your Honor in January. We've been really hard at work getting these done, and we have a ton of really exciting and varied stories that we can't wait to share with you. We've missed you, and we hope you are as excited as we are. But, in the meantime, I want to introduce you to a special show to help fill in the gap of Mice and Men and Monsters. Some of you may have heard us talk about them before. They are a really awesome actual play podcast where they play D&D, but mix it with some classic literature. Caitlin, the DM, is a high school English teacher, so who better to bring you remixes and fresh new looks at Frankenstein, Moby Dick, Robin Hood, The Count of Monte Cristo, uh, Oliver Twist, and a bunch of other stories. I've been a fan of, of Mice and Men and Monsters basically since we first stumbled upon them pretty early. I think they do something really fun. If you've ever run games and you're anything like me, you know that one of the most fun things to do in a D&D campaign is to take inspiration from books, games, movies, whatever it is that you're really enjoying right now and find a way to put a cool tabletop twist on it and let players explore these worlds that often aren't as interactive and responsive. And I think of Mice and Men and Monsters really captures that in a really, really fun way. It's not just funny, it's like kind of informative and you get some really interesting perspectives on some of these classics. And if you're not familiar, it might be a great introduction to the classics or even to, say, D&D or just different ways of running your games. I think you're really going to love it. So we're going to play for you Chapter 1 of Frankenstein, Part 1. This is a great place to jump into the show. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you want to check out more afterwards, make sure you look up Of Mice and Men and Monsters wherever you get your podcasts. They drop episodes every Wednesday. You can follow them on Twitter at O-M-A-M-A-M Show, O-M-A-M-A-M, or you can go to their website, omamam.com that's o m a m a m.com <laughs> it's it's a fu- it's a fun name anyways uh, i promise you the show is even more fun than the abbreviation enjoy You are already far north of your forest home, and as you walk in the streets of Geneva, you feel a cold northern breeze play upon your cheeks, which braces your nerves and fills you with delight. As you approach Dear Sister Margaret, the only tavern in this town, you glance down at the invitational flyer that brought you here. Genius artificer Dr. Frankenstein is looking for volunteers to serve as test subjects in his latest experiments. Do you have strength of mind, body, and spirit? You could earn 50 gold just for participating, and even grander prizes for completing the experiments. Come to the town of Geneva on Friday to participate. As your eyes finish scanning the flyer, you open the door to dear sister Margaret. What would the patrons in the tavern see as you cross the threshold? I, I look probably a little, a little weathered from walking through the, through the forest, although that is my kind of natural habitat. I think they see someone whose face is a little bit downtrodden, unsure, and also maybe a little bit of grit. I'm wearing a um wearing a green dark green robe. Uh looks a little bit like a jumper, maybe. We're not too sure. And uh, I have white hair and pointy ears because I am an elf. I have I have blue eyes and I have sharp features. All right. Yeah, I guess would they be used to seeing elves in in this tavern? Yes. Um, dear sister Margaret. <laughs> the dear sister Margaret, as uh, you see, is 
filled with people of all races, kinds, shapes, sizes. And so seeing an elf cross the threshold, even an elf that is maybe covered in grime or has some leaves in his white hair, wouldn't even bat an eye at that. Um, in fact, the tavern awesome. is alight with commotion and activity. At the tables, there's all sorts of gambling going on. And in the far corner, there is a group of three Aarakocras who are playing darts. At the far end of the bar is seated three people in dark cloaks. And everyone is giving them a wide berth. The room is abuzz with excitement. And you overhear someone mention an oncoming performance on the tavern stage. Where do you go first? I head straight over to the bar. I am going to speak to the the keep or the bar person, the bar maid or matron, talk about maybe what kind of beverages they have. Okay. Uh, so you come up to the bar, and up there is a, right. a burly man. Uh, looks a little bit past his prime, uh, just this grizzled human that turns to you with a very wide smile on his face. Uh, and he says, Ah! Welcome! You must, uh, you must be here because of the flyer going around. Well, hey, mister. Yeah, you could say that uh, I saw that flyer and stepped into this here establishment, but, uh, well, what I could really use is a drink. What do you have on tap? (laughs) What do I have on tap? A young, old, something? I don't know. Master Alpha, we have... Hard spirits, we have lindenberry water, we have teas, we have coffees. We even, uh, I don't know, I, I've gotten a little bored in my old age, so I've even tried my hand at a bit of mixology. Alchemy among the spirits, as you might say. So, surprise me, I'll try something. Uh, I'll, take, I'll take whatever wine I can get for this. And he slides over, uh, just like a, a two silver, across the... I have no idea if that's if that's enough money or not, but I think he just says, "Well, hey, whatever wine you can give me for this, I'll take that." He uh, puts his hand over it, slides it to him, looks at it, smiles widely. He's like, "You betcha!" And uh, he hands you a glass of this gleaming red mold wine, which is perfect for the bracing cold that is now starting to develop outdoors. Awen takes a big drink of this uh, mulled wine, uh, kind of inhales. Well, what did you say your name was again? I didn't say my name. My name's uh, Walton. Formerly uh, Captain Walton, because, you know, I lived my life on the sea, but that's uh, another lifetime ago. So now I'm here and own this here tavern, dear sister Margaret. So uh, will you be staying the night? Well, Cap, I'm not too sure if I'm staying the night or not. You tell me, what's the deal here with this flyer? You know who this is? Dr. Frankenstein? Uh, I mean, we all know of him. Barely any of us know him. But uh, he lives in that castle up yonder, just beyond the hill. Kind of uh, looming over this whole, I I don't know, city? Town depends on where you've been. Some people call it a city because it's kind of medium sized. Others call it a town or a village because, you know, they feel like they're a little bit big in the britches. I think it's pretty nice here. It looks like an establishment to me. He come from good stock. You trust him? I mean, he brings me good money by bringing people into the town for this experiment. So, yeah, I trust the money he brings in. But like I said, I All never right. met the fella. All right. Fair enough. And I walk away. Okay. <laughs> As you I go walk and sit in the, I go sit in the back corner. In the back corner. Ooh, always a good idea to sit in the back corner. Quick question. So like when he was talking, you know, I'll go talk to the bar matron or maid, and then you came in as the grizzly guy. Would that have been an opportunity for me to step in and tease him for assuming it was going to be a woman? Or are we being serious at this point and I shouldn't improvise? Oh, joke? yeah. No, uh, you I, should totally. I shouldn't break the fourth wall. Okay. You can I wanted break to the make sure wall. I told. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. That I retroactively yeah. tease Aaron for assuming it was going to be a bar <laughs> matron. No, I, I didn't. I didn't want to assume. <laughs> I didn't know what's the what's the guy's version of a bar maid. I thought it, it was, was matron, just, but apparently it's both. No, female, you did so. it right. It was just funny, like it's a maid or a matron. She was like a grizzly man <laughs> pops from behind. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh god! Oh god! <laughs> 
So as you step away from the bar to find a cozy backspace, uh, we go back outside with our camera and we see that Adam, you are making your way into Geneva and now the sun is still visible, its broad disk just skirting the horizon and diffusing a perpetual splendor. As you enter the tavern, even though I mentioned earlier that this is filled with all sorts of people, well, at the sight of you, you draw quite a few curious stares, including that of Awen. Why would they take notice of you? Probably because I'm a seven-foot robot, so that's probably number one. <laughs> so I would, I, I bet he would be, I'm, I'm assuming the doorway probably isn't seven feet tall. So my character, this pretty much like black steel, very gangly, long gangly robot with a large collar behind his head that's adorned with a bunch of flowers and herbs, um, a bunch of colors kind of smattering behind his head, like almost like a halo, um, growing out of his own, his, his own machinery um, kind of built into his body. So yeah, he's probably lurching in under the doorway and standing up and... As soon as, he, as soon as he looks up, I'm sure he would notice everyone's eyes looking at him and would feel a little embarrassed. Uh, yeah, in, in fact, it, it kind of like dies down for a few seconds. And Walton, who is doing the usual barkeep thing of dusting out a glass for the next five minutes with nothing else to do, um, kind of stops. He's like, well, aren't you a side over there? Welcome. Seen it all today. I've seen it all today. And he just like starts to turn away and he's like, I'm over it already. Um, but you uh, and, and your character's name is Bertram. OK, so you, Bertram, where do you decide to perch up now that some of them are still staring? Others, though, are pretending not to stare, but really looking out of the corner of their eye and still others are too interested in their gambling or their drinking to really care too much. Yeah, I think I, uh, since someone's already addressed him and it looks like someone with uh, some authority in this place, I think I would make my way over to the bar as well, probably knocking into people as I go, um, maybe like nudging them with like a, with a knee to the back of the head or something like that um, <laughs> until I get up to the bar. Uh, and I think if I looked at the stool and seeing how like dirty and kind of dusty it is, I think I would pull out a little handkerchief from my my breast pocket and would give it a little bit of dusting bef and put it back in my pocket before I sit down. Um, excuse me, my good sir. Um, might I trouble you for a, a tall glass of your finest water, please? And thank you. Wow. Aren't you just the gent with all the manners? Uh, you just want, wa you drink water? It you don't like have oil or I don't know. Oh yes, yes, exhaust I, I, or I, water is yes. good for you. <laughs> There's oil amongst other things inside me, but uh, the water isn't. No, it's not. It's not for me. I, I don't. I don't take the nourishment myself. It doesn't sustain me. It's for my. It's for my flowers and herbs behind my head. I'm sure. I'm sure you've noticed them. Oh, oh. So, so how? I mean, sure. And he's you know in the midst of this just. Um, taking the glass and there's just a spigot to the side and you can see like it's not distilled it's nothing special he just is basically putting tap water in there and as he's filling it with tap water <laughs> he's like so what do you do you just toss it over your shoulder at, at the fellas growing around you or how, how do you water that oh oh hang on sorry it got a little bit there um <laughs> here here you go and he hands it across to you after a kind of tipping the overflow onto the side of the bar where he will then later mop it up and use it to clean that area of the bar. Oh, my simple fellow. No, no. I, I still drink it. It still goes down. I think it would look a little bit odd uh, if I just threw it over my shoulder. But um, no, I drink it and it goes into my, into my machinery and swirls around and ends up back up by my plants. You know, I don't I don't know quite the intricacies of how I was constructed, um, per se, but, eh, it seems to work, all the same. Um, 
So, uh, does this, is this tap water, is this, is this free? Yeah, yeah, uh, this oh. is free. Um, you're, you're able to have this tap water at no cost, just for you, buddy. It's, it's a secret between you and me. <laughs> and he gives you a big old <laughs> wink. Oh, I'm sorry, it's so, Im- ah, so improper to ask for about money and things of that sort, but... I'm just not living the same lifestyle I used to live, I guess you might say. Um, but thank you, dear sir, thank you. And I would take that water, and as I'm walking, well, I guess I'm looking for where I would go sit or stand, and as I'm doing that, I pull out from my bag, my satchel, I pull out this little, uh, what this looks like a normal silver spoon, and I would, I would, uh, I twirl it around, I'm like a teaspoon, and I would twirl it around in my glass for a second and pocket it before drinking the water. And, and I guess I would survey the room again. Can you uh, explain what was in the room? You mentioned people playing poker, um, some Sure, Eric yeah, there, there's, some, mm-hmm, there's some gambling tables uh, to the side, closer to the entrance. Um, along the back where Alwyn headed, there are some booths there um, near a stage where People can go up and perform at any time. Um, there are people who are talking about an upcoming performance from some uh, visiting sailors. And uh, you see the bar continue to stretch around the corner, um, and then it disappears into the back. Uh, there are stairs to the side, which would possibly lead upstairs to rooms if you decide to rent one for the night. Um, and of course, yes, there is a back area with more games, and I did mention there are three Aarakocras playing darts there. Oh, they're playing darts. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll stop there for now. Uh, I'll go... I'll go sit... I'll go stand over by the, um, the Aarakocra, and I'll just kind of observe, quietly off to the side, observing their game as they're, as they're playing darts. Okay. So, Kimmy, all this time, you have remained in the recess of a corner booth squeezed between the stage and the side door leading to the upstairs rooms. You have been gazing at this wonderful and stupendous scene of people of many different races talking excitedly about tomorrow's experiments and the rumored grand prize of a personalized creation of your choice made by Dr. Frankenstein. With your trained eyes of a thief, you see nobody stealing, nobody threatening, just pure curiosity and well-being which is something so foreign to you this past year. Although nobody seems to have taken notice of you, indeed, the very booth that Alwyn chose to come and slink back to is the very booth that you're sitting in the back of. He still hasn't noticed you in the shadows. But if he were to look your way, or anybody else, what would they actually see? He would see someone who is not comfortable in their own skin. Um, Someone kind of slight, short. Blonde hair that was definitely cut. It's short and cut well, but I clearly don't know how to style it. So it's just messy. I'm in traveling garb with light armor. And I'm just watching. (laughs) Just watching. Okay. (laughs) Just watching. Well, howdy, Fran. What you doing back there in the dark? Watching. Mm, It's a good group to watch. Mm-hmm. You see anything good so far? No, I was mainly just waiting for you to take another drink so I could try to scare you. <laughs> Were you just going to jump out and say booga booga booga? <laughs> Something of the sort. <laughs> well, all right. What about I'd rather them? watch. You saw them air cockro over there? What do you think of them? This is where Kimmy asks, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah they're like bird people did you watch rick and morty it's like bird person from rick and morty oh really yeah yeah, Wild. A, yeah. what a hard end okay cool um uh i've seen their kind in passing never seen this many in one place though mm, yeah they're pretty good at those darts gotta give it to them pretty mm. good now ma'am you tell me what what do you think of that big old robot that just came in there? It seems kind of out of place, don't you think? That is the most interesting thing I have ever seen. What do you think happens when you just pick those flowers? 
Do you think he'd notice? I'm not too sure, but I guess we could find out. So say, how much money are you willing to <laughs> put on it? Oh, make it interesting, huh? Well, I think I only have... I have no idea how much gold I have. I think I have a, st- was a starting amount, like 50 I have, gold or something like that. I have some amount of gold. <laughs> I have at least some gold because I bought this wine. I'd be willing to settle for a drink. All right. One drink. You're on. One drink? Now, All wait. Right. W- what's the wager here? Are we just going to sneak over and see which one of us can get it? Are we going to like tally up how many of the herbs we can pick? Looking at you, I think you're, you're pretty big. I feel like in this small and tight pub, if we both sneak over, it will be much less successful. Maybe I'll just sneak over, and if I'm able to pick some flowers without him noticing, I get a drink. Hmm. All right then, ma'am. You're on. All right, Kate. Now, how do I do this? So in Dungeons & Dragons, we tend to tell the DM what we want to do describe how that would uh, go down, and then I would tell you what you need to roll based on how you describe it. Um, so tell me, how would, how would you try to get to the collar of this seven-foot robot? robot. So, yeah, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm robot. like 5'4". So, I'm, so I'm basically... Like size to smaller. Oh, yeah. How are you going to climb that tree? Tell me. <laughs> you need a booster seat when you're in a carriage? <laughs> It's a rude question to ask a lady. Um, so here's what I do. I slowly sneak over. He's on the opposite side. So I dart in between people. I kind of pull up and I go, I sneak around the fireplace. I get up right behind him. And I say, excuse me, mister. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> God, Lord, girl. <laughs> made me quite a startle there. What, what, what was that? Come again? I said, excuse me, mister. What brings such a tall robot like you to a strange place like this? Oh, well, that's... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I guess I do look out of sorts here, don't I? Uh, well spotted, well spotted. Um, I'm here to see some kind of... I, I, I had this, saw this, came across this flyer. I saw that there was some kind of, some kind of test of skills... Um, for adventurers from some Dr. Frank somebody, Frank Frankenstein, I, uh, I believe it is. Um, so I'm here uh, to see what, uh, what comes of that, I guess. I don't really have any other place to be if I'm, if I'm being uh, uh, painfully honest. Fascinating. I, too, have this flyer. Interesting. Wait, Did you show, me, notice- show, me the, show me your flyer. I pull Did mine you notice? out and I hold it. I pull this, mine this out same as well. Flyer? I pull mine out as well and I say, but did you notice the secret symbols on the corner of this flyer? Like they're, they're very slight, but did you notice the secret symbols on this? And then I push it, I pull it over and I hold it like between us so we both are kind of faced and looking. And then I here, use sleight of hand. Sure. It's so, so good. <laughs> I, then I use sleight of hand to pull around. I'm short. Oh. But he's bending down to look at it, and I use sleight of hand to All right. pick a flower. Does it work? What do I do? All right, Kibby, you're going to do two rolls for me. First, you're going to roll deception to see if that even works to get him to bend down. And then right, you're going to roll sleight of hand if that does succeed. Okay, so I use the 20-side die, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then okay. for you, your deception is a, woo, is a plus five. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I, I definitely looked at what my higher numbers were. <laughs> okay, hold Smart. on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got a seven. So twelve? Oh. Or was or it? Or did you roll plus a two yeah, plus, so you plus five? Plus. I I rolled a seven. Okay, so seven. seven okay, so then you add your modifier. So you, okay, so you rolled a twelve. Seven. No, okay. That, yeah. For uh, in this case, that was enough. He he's still not completely believing you, but I would say that this is enough to get Bertram to start to bend down. Uh, mm-hmm. to look at exactly what you're trying to show him. So now you're going to roll mm-hmm. sleight of hand, which is a good bonus. Perfect. And then I'm going to, while I'm doing all this, I'm talking about um, my experience with secret symbols and that they were really small, but blah, blah, blah. 
and then I roll, and I get a five <laughs> plus eight, so that's 13. That was embarrassing how long it took me to do that math, but I got thir- I rolled 13. Welcome to the mental math institution of being bad at it. <laughs> I'm going to get so much better playing this. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. You do. You successfully pick a flower from his collar. Uh, Ooh. Now, as soon as you get that flower and he hasn't noticed, what will you do? I, so I take the flower. I immediately slip it behind my ear, push my hair in front of it. Um, and then I can count on my little mouse Pip to crawl up and grab it because we've done this before. Whoa, Pip! Pip is my mouse. Um, oh, P.S. A there's friend. a mouse. There's a mouse. <laughs> that, P.S. Should I wait? This is just like little little mouse homie just hanging with you. Can I, I roll? Have a mouse. Can I roll to see if I notice the mouse? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh no! I your... mean, I brought another element. Oh, I didn't think about That's this. It's so is good. That, is that Roll perception. But he's like crawling yeah. up behind my neck. Like Pip calls up behind my neck and grabs the flower. Why would you notice that? Eh, don't oh, worry. It's only a 10. Right. No, that would. <laughs> uh, my rolls I are was... terrible, by the way. So do whatever, <laughs> do whatever you want. I, I would say just as, just as Pip the mouse is nestling back, grabbing the flower and going back to his little hiding place, um, you he's see. <laughs> yes, in your little, your satchel. Uh, is it crossbody? Very practical. Oh, no. This is, we're talking fanny pack. Oh. I'm a child of the 80s, the 1780s. That was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> keep it in, keep it in. Love it. So just as uh, Pip is sliding into that little hip pocket of your fanny pack, as it were, um, a feathered hand comes into view and it just slides in and pricks one of the flowers off of uh, Bertram's collar and it's like are we doing this now? I got bored with the darts but uh, are you just handing out flowers for everybody big man? And what you are you see doing one of the air- bird man? Oh un- unhand me I bird immediately man. get up in arms I immediately, oh wait, tell me if it's the wrong move. I immediately get up in arms and said, that is a terribly rude thing to do. How dare you? Don't you understand etiquette? So Thank you. Someone with a little dignity and manners. Oh, you said I have bad manners. I mean, I was just over here playing darts and then I look over and I see a mouse. I'm sorry. You called me bird man or a bird folk or whatever. I'm called all the things nowadays, but... I can't help but notice a mouse when there is one, even as well hidden as yours is. I'm not the no. first one to pluck your flower, as it were, Sir Robot. Who who else has plucked my, a flower from me this evening? You, you mean you you don't know? You were just bending down, and she plucked it. We all saw it, right, guys? And the other two Aarakocras that are are with this one just kind of nod, like, "Yep, yep, we saw it." And I think uh, uh, it, would, it would dawn on Bertram, finally, and all the commotion. And I think I would look down at, um, is it Penelope, you said? Well, here's the thing. Before oh, you I'm do, Because you've been talking to them, right? It is Penelope, but you don't know that yet. Can I, I don't, I don't know how this works. While he's, because he's talking at them, can I be slinking away? <laughs> or is that not allowed? Do I need to wait till my turn? No, all this time you can be. Uh, I mean, he's been away. talking with them for like thirty seconds. This is a small pub. I am back in that corner by the end of this, and he like turns and I'm gone like a sitcom. Dude, but isn't I that like good. five feet away? Isn't that like five <laughs> feet away? <laughs> yeah, it's he literally like on the other end of the room. <laughs> but he didn't even see me when I'm in the, cor- in the corner. I just really want this drink. You, you, ooh, you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Oh, All right. Yes. Um, 1700s. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do another roll because this is your intro into D&D, Kimmy. I'm making you do all right. the rolls tonight. Yeah. Okay. I want you to Good. do a stealth roll for me. Oh, yeah. Wait, why do I have a T for my stealth? Yeah, I don't know why you put a T on your <laughs> sheet. <laughs> okay, that's not a thing. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's either five or six, right? The five and the six are right above the T. Let's I hope. So I, I was like, oh, you must have your dex is Your dex <laughs> I think is, it's just your dex mod. It's just your dex. Yeah. So it just put okay, a plus I have four. A five. Wait, are you proficient in stealth? 
Uh, it said T. I should be right because I'm a yes. rogue. There's like yeah. a little. There should be like a little dot. Yeah. So you yeah. add your proficiency modifier. Yes. There's them. a dot. Yeah. Great. So I'm gonna say five. That sounds right. Actually, you're right. Five. Them, it's so it's uh, actually a your dex plus your um, proficiency. So here it would be a plus six. Plus six. That's okay. Five. Thank That's you. Sorry about that. Um, I guess I. <laughs> that was great. I really thought T was something. Okay. I am rolling. <laughs> <laughs> that's how fresh i feel i rolled a 12 plus six so it's 18 Dang, oh yeah you were able to slink away in the midst of that and so, so by the time bertram realizes he's been had and he turns to look down at to where you were he sees nothing Foing. Mm -hmm. and i'm at eowyn and i've immediately just dropped it right in front of him and snuck back to my corner and he he picks it up and looks. No, I can't tell you what you're doing. Never mind. So sorry. So I've dropped it right in front of you and snuck into my corner. Well, well, sneaky little one, aren't you? Interesting. Well, what can I get you to drink, ma'am? I would love the same thing you're having. Bertram, you're there with three Aarakocras, um, all of whom seem to be very amused by your confusion. You all right there, buddy? You, you seem uh, a bit lacking in the words department. I, I suppose I just find myself out of sorts here. I'm, you think, oh, here's a small little innocent girl, and, and what, she's just lying and stealing and cheating? <sighs> I've, just, I've, never, I've never seen anything quite like it, I'm afraid. Do you, do, you, do you mind if I... If, well, I, I appreciate you being honest, at least, with me. Do you, do you mind if I... If I uh, uh, to stand here with you, with you, with you, uh, with you fellow birds for, for a little bit? Well, sure, but first things first. Stop calling me Birdman. My name is Felix. Nice to meet you. And he uh, extends a, a, a <laughs> like a, a paw, a, a hand, a whatever you call an Aarakocra's digit. And uh, Bertram takes the hand and bends down and kisses the top of his hand. And kind of does a little, a little bit of a kind of a curtsy, a little bit, a little bit of a, a, a bow as he does it. Felix, okay. it's, a, it's a, a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you, Felix. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't know your name. Um, Felix, and, what, and how about your, your, your friends here? What, what are their oh. names? Oh, uh, one on the left, uh, the tall, annoying one. That's Agatha. That's my sister. Agatha, and then, uh, I, I, I kiss that hand. Oh, uh, thank you. I kiss that uh, hand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th this one here, this this bodacious babe, this is Safi. Uh, she uh, doesn't know yet, but one day she's going to be my girlfriend. And she just uh, rolls her eyes at him. You have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Um, but then she <laughs> she's like, but if you're at it, and she extends her like, hand to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, of course, I, I kiss it as well. Um, well, Felix, Agatha, and Safi, a, a pleasure, pleasure to meet all of you. Um, Felix, uh, here, if, if, if you already took one flower, but you missed this one. And I pull, I pluck another flower from behind me, and it's an even more beautiful, like, white rose. And I give it, I give it to him. Um, a lot of ladies uh, I've seen in my, uh, in my life seem to really like the, the white rose. So maybe you can try giving that to Safi and... And who knows what might happen. Ooh! I like this guy. I, I, I like this guy a lot. Um, so he, he takes it and then he turns towards Safi. He's like, Safi, look what I got for you. And he holds it out to her and she just rolls her eyes and leans down and eats it. Um, and then walks away. <laughs> hey, so. well, I'm, I'm sorry about that, Felix. So, well, I guess maybe the white rose doesn't work for... Bird people, if you don't mind me saying. Do you live here in this town of, of Geneva? Uh, yeah, we, we, we've been uh, living here for a bit. Uh, my sister, she, she owns the local smithy. And uh, really, we, we, it's kind of a pop-up shop, as it were. As, as soon as Dr. Frankenstein moved in, he, he put out kind of this uh, hiring call for all types of artisans to work on his uh, latest experiment. And... So we're here. We've been here for the past couple of months and doing stuff here and there. And 
we'll be here as long as we're needed and then move on as we do. I, I'm going to be joining the experiments tomorrow. I mean, I think I might have a leg up because I helped with like three of the rooms, but um, I'm sure there's a way that I won't even see those rooms. He's, he's a wily one, but, you know, might as well. I'm here. Oh, so there are, are rooms and different, different rooms, you say. Oh, well, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you might, uh, you can share about this Frankenstein fellow and maybe what we have in store for, for tomorrow? How about let's make this interesting? You and I, let's play some darts. You best me in some darts. I buy you a drink or whatever the hell it is that you drink or imbibe. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what I know. Oh, yes, but parlor games, as it were. I've, I've, I've played a little bit with my, with my, old, uh, with my old lord. Uh, he, was he loved this game very much, but I was never quite good at it. Um, oh, sure. that, that's good for me then. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, so you guys are, are going to be playing some darts now uh, in fantasy darts with dice. Uh, we're going to just make it pretty Whoa. simple. Um, we're basically, you're going to make a ranged attack roll. Um, which will be your dex modifier or your dexterity modifier um, three times. And uh, whoever has the higher overall score, let's just say they won that round. Gotcha. Okay, so it's, it's three d20s? Yes, yeah, so you're going to roll three d20 um, with your... And you, you're a plus zero on ranged attack. Yep, my rolls have not been good so far. Okay. You got this. Uh, tw uh, 25 plus 14. 39. Uh, 39. Okay. Oh, damn. Pl wait, plus what? Plus 14? 25 plus 14? Is that... Yes, 39, right? Ooh, and he got a 36. So you won the first round. Let's make a few more rolls. See how this round goes. Here you are, ma'am. Now, what did you say your name was again? Um, my full name is Penelope LaRoche Vanderhoot. Uh, friends call me Penny, so you can call me Penelope, and if we become friends at the end of the night, we'll, we'll see where we stand. All right. The two of you, uh, Awen and Penelope, as you're sitting there having your discussion and your mold wine together, um, you notice that at the stage nearby, um, some people in really all I can describe as sailor garb um, come through and they start to set up on the stage with varied musical instruments. There's like five of them setting up on stage and uh, one of them, uh, a tiger-striped tabaxi, um, kind of stringing a harp to the side is the closest one to you. Um, and she sees like the flowers out of the corner of her eye and she kind of looks over you. It's like, hey, uh, yeah, uh, you got a good seat. You're here to watch the show? And a tabaxi's like a cat person. Mm -hmm. And she's talking to me? She's talking to both of you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe. No, I, I'm, uh, I'm just here for the mold wine, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the show. Huge fan. Been following your guys' career for a while, actually. Never met a sailor I didn't like. So uh, I knew I had to be here tonight. Really? Really? A mm -hmm. sailor you didn't like? Name's Millie, by the way. Who are you guys? Hi, Millie. Name's Penelope. Hi, uh, my Penelope. My name's Awen. Hi, Awen. Well, uh, yeah, me and my crew over here, we're just going to be playing some background music, because why the hell not? And uh, hopefully you guys like it. I, I think with that going on and seeing like the, the musicians come in, too, um... I think I would kind of follow them as they, uh, my eye, they kind of catch my attention, these sailors walking in, and I, and I, I look over at them. And I, I think I would catch Millie, or one of them talking to the girl who stole from me. Mm. And so I would say, oh, Felix, I'm sorry. Uh, one second, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. I, I need to do something real quick. Don't you run out on me. And so I lumber over to the two ladies. Excuse it, pod, pardon me, Bod. Um, oh, just, hi, Mister. I nice to think, see you again. I just think you should know the sort of person you're dealing with here. This person right here is a thief and a liar. 
they are just uh, no good. I, I don't think you should be. Uh, you, sh- you should watch your your bags and your goods and your instrument whenever you're around this lot right here. Oh, Mister, I, what's making you say this? I Bertram, have a lovely time chatting with you over there. You may call me Mister Bertram, young lady. Sure thing, Mister Bertram. At this point, Bertram has just turned his face away from her and is blocking him, blocking her out, and is looking at the bard. Um, excuse me, uh, I, again, just watch your things, uh, this one over here cannot be trusted, and now you have been warned, she's gonna go on about knowing all kinds of symbols and, and other kind of deceitful things, and when your back is turned, something bad will happen, I'm sure of it. <laughs> and Awen, Awen walks up, uh, next to Bertram, well, I've never seen anything like you. You are magnificent. Has anyone ever told you that? Wonderful. Why, yes, one person did at one point in my life. Thank you. What, what did you say your name was again, Mr. Mr. Bot? Mr. Bot. Uh, Mr. Bot. It's Mr. Bertram. Bertram. And your Bertram, name is? Mr. Bertram Bot. Well, my name is Awen. Very nice to meet you. And you too, sir. You too. Miss Bard here, I look forward to your music, and I guess I'll be seeing you two tomorrow night, or tomorrow Mr. morning, Mr. Bertram, I Mr. Say. Bertram, mm, don't yes. be frustrated with my nice friend Eowyn here, who is just trying to help me out. And then I pull, I, I kind of uh, click, and then Pip comes out with the flower um, that you made everything else disappear. Oh, but a rat! The real flower. I imagine and you wouldn't disappear. I want to go. I want to go right. and try nope. and. Sm- nope. I want to go and try and smash the the rat because I think it's a pest. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh. No, I jump. I jump back. Ma'am, watch out! There's a there's a rat here. And I try and no, s- no, 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 slam. No. My, I slam. <laughs> I slam Not. my uh, my fist down the table. I want you to make an attack roll, please. <laughs> oh damn! Already. Holy crap. Watch out, Rip Pip. If Pip dies. That was a mighty three. Oh my God. Yeah, you definitely hey. whiff on that one. Pip is Pip is uh, quick enough to dart out of the way. But I keep mm-hmm. trying to like smack it. I'm like, oh, oh God, <laughs> these pests are everywhere, I swear. Mr. Bertram, please, that is not a pest. That is my friend. And if you hadn't immediately gone up in arms about him, you would have seen that he brought you something. And then Pip pops up again with the flower in his mouth. Uh, you, you, you have friends with the, with the rat? It's not a rat. It's a mouse. For some reason, we mm. like them more as a society. So I think you should open your heart to it. Mm. All right. So your, your, your pet mouse, I guess. Because that, that, that makes it a whole lot better, apparently. Uh, what mm-hmm. is that in its, in, its little, in its little mouth, I guess? This is your flower. And I am very sorry to have taken this from you. I do not have much money or opportunity. And so I'm, a bet was struck so I could get a drink. But Mr. Awen here has been nothing but trying to defend a new friend. Awen, you can call me Penny now. And I just think you shouldn't hold it against him Ching. for showing loyalty to someone. And I, in a measure of goodwill, want to return to you what is yours. And fun fact, he can make those come out of anywhere. So if you need more, he's the one to ask. And I'm talking anywhere. Well, I... <laughs> Madam, giving me back a flower that you already stole that's already withering in, in the mouth of a mouse um, isn't as much. I might need a little bit more of a kind gesture if your friend here, a- Awen, was it, sir? Well, yep, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> my friend over there, Felix, if you could go over there to him, perhaps you could say that I sent you over there because you heard that he was courting some fine Ericocra lady friend of his, and perhaps you could give him a whole bunch of flowers uh, using your your spell that you have. Maybe you can give him some flowers to give to her. Would that make it right? If that makes it right, then I'll go over there right now. Thank you. And uh, if yeah, I, I if I, I may if there. I may join your table, then because I do not know anybody here, like I said, it would be, be nice to to chat with some people here. Well, Mr. Bertram, you're in luck. I tend to think you're fascinating and would like to be your friend. Um, so please make yourself at home. When I pull up a chair.
All right, Edwin, are you going to go over to Felix and uh, create some flower magic? Yep, I walk over and I um, I offer him some. I offer him some flowers. I, I talk. To, I tell him I'm friends with uh, good old Bertram, and I say this is for your this is for your lady friend Sophia. Safe, Safia, Safi, Safi, oh Safi. Oh, well, th- thanks, thanks, Safi. I have more flowers, and so he uh, just leaves you and with just all this bunch of flowers in his hands. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. So, do you want to head back to the group? Do you want to look around the room? What would you like to do right now, Eamon? Yeah, I'd love to make a. I'd love to to use detect magic to see if I detect anything magical in this room. Hmm. <laughs> see if there's anything going on. Uh, you. Yeah. Um. You. You feel like a slight. Um. And with detect magic, you have to. I have to tell you the type of magic, right? Yeah. So, like, I sense the presence of magic within thirty feet of me. Um. If I sense magic in this way, I can use my action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears the magic, and I learn the school of magic, if any. Okay. Um. You. You cast detect magic, and you notice. Uh. You. You feel magic. Um. Coming from your right side, at the bar. Um. Closer to the end, like where the you cap. see the three hooded figures sitting. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, I slowly make my way over to where I feel this magic kind of emanating from. It's just an aura. I don't really feel like a school of magic. Just like this sense of magic. Yeah. It's. It's kind of like a weird tinted magic where it's it's like a hybrid um that's the best way you can think of it in your mind you see and you in your mind's eye kind of an aura of necromancy and transmutation um but there's other signatures in there that you can't quite put your finger on there's almost like a metallic taste to it if you could put it that way yeah i think i walk past them and kind of circle back and go go over to the table to uh, to Bertram and and Penny. Okay. Um. You know, at this time, uh, Millie has left the table and she's uh, with her peeps and they're uh, playing instrumental music in the background, kind of a lot of uh, sea shanty uh, type music. And uh, what we would see is like the equivalent of like a, a cover band, so cover songs of a uh, of popular, I guess, tunes. Come on, Eileen. Yes, definitely. Popular sea shanties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves those. <laughs> I mean, I love a sea shanty. One of my favorite Fly the Concord songs is she's a sea shanty. Anyway, let's do this. <laughs> like a dirge. <laughs> so as the, the cheerful music is picking up in the background and some people are starting to dance and sway um, in front of the uh, platform that is being used as a stage right now, um, you come back with this kind of like uneasy feeling, Awen, uh, to your two compatriots, two people that you know better than anybody else in this bar, which is not that well at all. Um, but at least you're starting to create a home base. Y'all, see, y'all see those uh, those hooded figures over there? Three at the bar. Bert- no. Bertram turns his whole seven foot body and very not very <laughs> <laughs> very apparently <laughs> just turns like who those guys. Yeah, something's not right with them. Mm-hmm. I just smell something in the air. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's dirty and muggy or something. I don't know what that that <laughs> smell is. Mm-hmm. It's like, it smells, it smells like, like it smells like moldy towels. Mm-hmm. Oh, the worst smell. <laughs> really That's the world's is. worst smell. Uh, p- p- I I only just got here. I don't I don't know how long you you two have been here. Um, Penelope, have you been here for a while? Mm-hmm. Been here for a few hours. Uh, have you have you noticed anything uh, off about about those people? Have they gotten up? Have they moved? Have they ordered a drink or talked to anybody else? Have they they've, they've just been sitting there? Not once. Which mm. Captain Walton, strangely, just cleaning the bar anyway. Just keeps wiping mm. it. Just keeps wiping that glass. Um, so that's been the most interesting part, honestly. Should, I mean, maybe they're just lonely and they don't know anybody. I mean, pe- everyone gave me eyes when I walked in here. Perhaps they're just lonely and they don't know anybody. 
Should I invite Mr. them Bersha. over? Should I invite them over to sit with us? No. 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 You should. Oh. You should not do that, Mr. Bertram. You are the you most empathetic robot I have ever met. Uh, in my in my experience. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you. I, I, uh, that's a very also kind a, of you. Thank you. Also, a terrible idea. Horrible idea. We are not inviting oh. the scary oh. men to the table. No. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think at this point I'm getting a little bit tired. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and talk to the captain about getting a room for the night. Okay, so Awen and Bertram, you guys are going to be staying the night in that room. Um, staring into each other's eyes all night. <laughs> that's right, just staring the whole night. Uh, so the two of you head on upstairs. Um, meanwhile, uh, Penelope, where are you going to go to spend the night? I'm outside already. I left 10 minutes ago. I saw them talking. That was a perfect moment. I, liked, I like a good um, Irish goodbye, so... <laughs> I was, I was uh, so as you as you head outside and you're looking for um, a place maybe up on the roof to stay the night and get all comfy cozy um, with Pip, um, you as you survey like the top, a big old figure just like bumps into you, um, and you look up and you see this this lizard folk, um, huge ass lizard basically. Um, He's like, oh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, have you seen my friend Gavin? Oh, the conspiracies are true. Um, no, I have not met Gavin. Was just trying to find a place to rest, not thinking it's going to be this. Uh, what did you need Gavin for? Ga- Gavin is he's my friend. He's he's a he's a funny fellow, and he talks kind of funny too. But ah. Uh... I haven't seen him since yesterday, and really, uh, we were going to go in on this competition together, and I haven't seen him since last night, and I was just wandering around hoping to see him in the last place I saw him. I don't know, so let me know if you see uh, another guy that looks like me. He gestures up and down at his lizard self. Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. Giant lizard, got it. Giant around. lizard Strong talks asses. funny and uh, it's a strange thing to say about yeah. oneself, but I'll, I understand. Okay, I, where was people the last tell us all the time? Uh, <laughs> it's unfair last time I saw him. I, I know, I know, but that's that's the state of being a lizard folk. Mm. Any, anyways, uh, where's the last place you saw him? And what's your name? Um, oh, my DeGraw? name. DeGraw. No, no. What what a funny <laughs> oh thing God. to say. Hey, just no, my my name is Kerwin. Nice to Kerwin. meet you. Yeah, Good Kerwin. Name. Kerwin. Um. Anyways, yes. Uh, last time I saw Gavin, my friend, um, we were down by the docks, just sitting side by side, dangling our little footsies into the water and looking out at the sunset. And then I fell asleep on the dock, and I woke up and. He was gone, but that funny fellow does it all the time. So I thought maybe here, here's Gavin yet again playing hide and go seek, that funny fellow, and just wasn't hmm. here, so can't find him. I mean, there was this puddle of blood over there, but I mean, that happens all the time when you're oh. a lizard folk, and then, uh, yeah, I've been looking for him ever since. There's so much to unpack there. I think my next question is going to be, though, um, what... Could I, what are you looking? So you just want me to keep an eye out for Gavin? Is there something? Yeah, I can do I, to I'm help? trying is to find any, my. F- mm-hmm. Is there any, you know, um, uh, money in this for me? I'm just gonna be. I'm a straightforward woman. Is there any money in this for me? If there's a little money, my oh. uh, my help is yours. Oh, I, I, I'm I'm sorry. I, I have no. This is why we're doing the experiment. I mean, even just the fifty gold would be nice. Mm. So no. No gold, Listen, you know, nothing. Kerwin, I, I really want to help you. I like you. But the problem is if I help you, then you have more help beating me in this experiment. So I will keep an eye out. I don't want any ill to fall to Gavin. But I think for tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bed. Um, are you staying on this roof? It's a nice roof. I'm just, I'm just going to be right here. Oh, okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm just going to go down by the dock again. Maybe Gavin will show back up uh, at the dock. So, mm. no. No? All right. Great. More roof for me. Um, well, then, if I see Gavin, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Um, he'll be pretty easy to spot. Um, I would say keep thinking about that pu- puddle of blood. That's my, that's my piece of advice to you. Keep thinking about the puddle of blood. 
maybe dig into that a little more, not physically. And um, I will see you tomorrow at the experiment. Hope you find Gavin. Thanks. And he walks off and you just hear him yell out, Gavin? Gavin? Gav? He's never, Gav, he's my never boy. Gonna Gavin. Gavin. Never find him. Um, Gavin is okay. dead. At noon the next day, a programmed illusion of an unassuming elven man blinking behind a pair of large glowing goggles and gracefully holding a cup and saucer appears in front of the tavern to give the rules. Hello. Welcome to my experiments. I am Dr. Frankenstein. As you can see behind me in the ground, and he like lazily like draws his hand um, in the air. And as his hand is drawn in the air, um, you see in the in the dirt behind him a glowing line appears, as if it's a starting line. In the ground, here is basically your starting point. Um, but before you cross it, just a few things to know, so that. By crossing the line, you are assenting to this experiment and therefore saying, yes, I will join. First... Terms of service. (laughs) Basically, like, I have no dotted line for you to sign, so uh, I just have a glowing line for you to cross instead. Um, But first, uh, if you... Participate, I will pay you 50 gold. If you complete the experiment, which is a maze, uh, I will give you 700 gold. If you are the first one to finish said maze experiment, um, you will get a tailor-made bespoke creation of your choice but only for the one who finishes first. The rules are simple. Rule one. Once you cross the starting line, the experiment begins. Rule two. Be prepared for combat. Failing a level results in immediate disqualification. Death also disqualifies you. And... Rule three, as I mentioned before, first one to finish wins. I do not split or go halvesies or share. There's only going to be one winner. Uh, but feel free to join up together, then wait till the end and then betray. I, I don't care. I'm just, uh, you're helping me with his experiment. Anyways, um... Frankenstein out, and it just uh, all of a sudden the the programmed illusion just Drops like the mic. yeah, um, programmed illusion uh, stops, um, and you see uh, you know on either side of you um, on that dirt path um, in front of this glowing line, you see other competitors have come. Um, you see uh, Felix there, kind of like jumping up and down, looking so excited. You see Millie. <laughs> um, kind of just like checking her nails and, um, with one hand and kind of like uh, doing a fun like in between her fingers tossing around of this like brass orb in the other. You see uh, a goblin um, competitor, two humans. Uh, you see Kerwin still yelling out for Gavin. No one's with him. Um, and uh, really... That's it. So it looks like it's it's you guys plus a f- handful of other competitors uh, for today. Quite a few of them crossed the line, and they have a running go at it as soon as the programmed illusion of Dr. Dr. Frankenstein goes away. What do you guys do? Do you cross the line, or do you stay? I, I would immediately like look around and kind of raise my hand. Uh, I'm sorry. D- did he say death? That did. Did did he did he say death? Millie chuckles well, I and think she he did. Yeah, Millie chuckles. She's like, "Of course, there's death. What do you think?" Oh, it's yeah. fifty gold <laughs> plus seven hundred if 700. we finish. And uh, I intend to, guys. Well, oh, well, maybe if we if we stick together, 
seven hundred would be more than I ever intended, and I don't need to win just being there, making it to the end. So maybe if we stick together, there's less of a chance of us dying. Well, yeah, come on, Bertrand. Uh, okay, let's go. Okay, and I kind of, I think if if that if that was Eowyn kind of leading the the pack, I think I would kind of like gingerly kind of walk behind him, kind of looking around kind of wondering why no one else is <laughs> seems to be scared about the this the thought of possibly dying going in here <laughs> did you do you happen to see penelope this morning oh no i didn't i didn't see her maybe she's still, i look around maybe she's still I, I look around do i see are you there um i'm there but i'm hitting you don't see me okay so great. you guys head great, on great, in great, great. all we, right we so the the two of you um the two of you cross the line uh, did Penelope cross the line? Um, once everyone goes inside, I stop. I finally kind of come out from hiding. I really look around. I look at the line. I try to, I suss the whole situation. Man, can I ask, is the only way to start the journey for me to go inside? Obviously, I'm going to cross the line. But is it to go inside or is there a way to, are There's there other ways to the rooms? There's one entrance. All right. So I, sa- I suss this out. I look around. I try to get a real feel of my surroundings, and then everyone's gone inside. I take a moment, and then I slowly head in, trying to stay out of the pack. As soon as you cross over that glowing line, a giant wall of fire glows up from that line, barring any chance of escape. There's no way to go but forward. And Millie, uh, about to enter in, looks back behind her, and she's like, well, shit, I guess we're in it now. You guys uh, reach the entryway to the experiment, um, and you can see the competitors in front of you, because yes, now you can call them competitors. There is a competition at stake. There's only one way to enter, and it is through kind of a, a chute, and you have to jump into it. And you notice that it's slowly rotating to a new, I guess, opening for each person coming in. Really, it, people have to go in single file. So even though people were running toward it, now you're kind of waiting in line. And as you're in line, um, you notice Penelope come to the back with you guys. So what do you guys think about this shoot? Is this a head first or a feet first situation for you guys? I would say before any of the three of you jump in, um, Millie's going to hold out her hand, her paw, um, and she's saying, wait, <laughs> let's look at this, guys. Would you guys uh, take an investigation, a uh, roll investigation for me, please? That's a 13. I got a two. 18. 18. Nice. Okay. Um, so I would say, Penelope, um, you recognize that there are some runes around the edge that you didn't notice before. Um, and they are in a, you happen to know, even though you can't read it, you know that this language is celestial. Millie would notice this as well. And she's like, huh, this uh, gives me an idea. I've seen this before. All right, guys, I know we were talking about trust last night, but do you guys actually trust me? Nope. But I that doesn't mean you shouldn't you. share. You should still tell us. I yeah, you trust you. I us. trust you as much as I trust anyone here. I think I know how to manipulate this. If you, if you guys want to go in together on this, I think like if I, if I can hold it still, there's a, there's a mechanism on the top. Maybe, um, if I can hold it still, you can go down the same chute. You want to try it with me? So we could all face a challenge together. Is That's right. what this looks like. It looks like oh. it's meant to separate. But oh, hey, this is a system we can beat, guys. Wait, I'm still, I'm still reeling at, at, at Bertram's comment about the trust we spent a whole night together you you're not going to trust everybody else i didn't kill you i didn't shut you down i see how it is man i, I well, see well it. It, it might be because no, no, i no, told you no, that my eyes okay. were open all night what if they weren't open all night i i i i, mm. tr- I trust you mm-hmm. Aileen, i believe you've 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 done nothing but ki- uh, but kindnesses to me so i i i trust you mm. and and Penelope, I think we're we're working on it. Um, I'm my arms are kind of getting tired holding this open. Can you guys jump in now? 
Yeah, I go in. And then I go in. And then I like go head first, kind of like tumbling into it. All right. Since uh, since the three of you jumped in together, you don't have to roll anything because you're now in the same room. Um, Sick. Millie, however, needs to roll to see if she ends in the same room with you. No, no, come on, okay, Millie. Say, she can't hold it. Us? She can't hold it for herself. Come on, Millie. No, she doesn't. All right, so oh. you wait. Uh, you wait a few Sorry, seconds, Millie. and you hear a click and a whir, and you see the, um, I guess, the entrance closed, and you realize. Nobody else is coming down there. It is just the three of you. The room opens up into a massive chasm built into um, the same mountain that Frankenstein's castle is built into. Um, And looking down, you see that the chasm tapers off into a slide that perhaps goes into another room. Um, But it is uh, in the dark. And there is one bridge across this chasm. And it's a narrow yet heavy plank of wood balanced on a pivot in the center of the chasm. Essentially a massive seesaw. Yeah, I want to look around. I have uh, I have night I have night vision or what is it called? Dark Dark vision. vision. (laughs) Night vision. Did you want to do a perception roll? Okay, go ahead and roll perception for me. What is the difference between perception and investigation? Is it the same? I, as a rule of thumb, I technically do. If you're looking at something broadly, um, it's perception. If you're narrowing in on something, like going up to it to check it out even further, that's investigation. Got it. Okay. Um, I got an eight. Yeah. Do I have? You don't, you don't notice anything else um, other than what I've described. Just there's one bridge across and you want to make it across there. I think we need to go ahead. You are a perceptive robot. But not very dexterous. Well, I mean, who's the smallest? I feel like this thing's kind of rickety. And maybe someone small and nimble might be good first one. Go mm. I wonder, I, I look around comically, <laughs> trying to see who else he could be speaking of. Um, well, don't, don't you, I don't mean you, Penelope. I mean, don't you have a little pip in your pocket? It's a great question. Um, pip. And then Pip pops up. And I grab him and um, I whisper to him, kind of think Gandalf with the moth on the top of Sarman's tower. I whisper oh. to Pip and then I let Pip down. Will Pip be able to, how far is the gap between the end of the seesaw? Or is it like, is the, the ground that it's going to hit right under it? Right under it. Right under, okay. The, is the high side close to us or is it the low side? Like we could walk up onto it? It's actually, it's actually um, resting precariously even right now. Oh, so it's, intriguing. it's on the point right now, just at the correct oh. fulcrum area. And so any step on it is going to knock it down. Mr. Bertram, are you you're pretty strong? I mean, you're a robot and everything. You got the strength. You might think that looking at me, but... These arms were never quite built for lifting and pulling, and they were meant for for baking and folding of clothes. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm not very strong, unfortunately. I'm sorry, I do, mm. but I do feel like dead weight right now. I'm sorry, I'm not very dexterous or 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 strong, but I'm sure one of these rooms, I'll 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 be able to help us. I swear it. But I might need <laughs> I might need your your uh, your guidance in this room. Man, you you got you guys are doing great. This is this is the easiest level. <laughs> this is the easiest level, and you guys are just like rocking just it, riffing it so Woo! hard. All okay, right, I I I just I will run into the middle as fast as I can, as dexterously as I can. Um, Aaron, I want you to roll dexterity for me, and if you have anything for acrobatics, add that on. All right, that's 15. Yeah, you cross the bridge just fine. Is he across or is he in the middle right now? I don't know. Did you want to stop in the middle or did you want to go all the way across? I just went across. Yeah, just go across? you are all the way across. You're on the other mm. side of the chasm just waving. Eowyn, but if you were more on the other side, you could counter, you could counter our weight. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could probably get across. Pip's, Pip's just chilling by the door. What if you give me your rope, Mr. Bertram? We tie it around your waist. I run across, and then you can take it however you want. And if you fall, I, we have your rope. If you, if you trust us. 
Okay, yeah, uh, here. Well, uh, so I'll, I'll, while I'll tie, Bertram is I'll, talking and sputtering. You're tying? We're tying it, and I'm just holding it and already going as he's arguing about it. Okay, yes, right, yes. dexterity for me I'm with already. acrobatics. Please don't fall, because then you'll right. take me with you. Hopefully it's not a one. I rolled a two, but I also have dexterity's 18, and then acrobatics is four, so that's... That's a six. Wait, wait, wait. Six. 24. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Oh, so you gotta do oh. the modifier. For dexterity. So there's number. a little number above the high number. Mm-hmm. Oh, so maybe so I don't your, make your it. modification for dexterity is plus four. So you rolled a two. So wait, why yeah, does my dexterity 18? That's like your that, base that's number. Like, that's like, yeah, determines. your value number. And so, oh, so yeah. because I scored under. Oh, so I didn't do well. So I must have fought, but I have the rope. So I just swing over, right? Oh, well, well, you tell me that. Interestingly enough, so you run across very sure Ten. of yourself. Um, <laughs> And uh, even though your eyes are on the prize, um, something in the rope kind of jerks you back. You, you don't have it rightly. And so um, you actually trip off of the seesaw and are now dangling, holding onto Bertram, who's still on the other side. So we have Awen on the side of the next level. We have you dangling on the rope attached to the waist of Bertram who's standing on the oh, the beginning side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, this plan was all about me, really. So-